Hey, this is Ryan from AccuTune Off-Road, and today we're gonna to talk about universal fit coilovers. And we're gonna help you figure out what size coilover you need to buy for your build. And we're gonna show you how to take some measurements and how to mock those up so that you get the right size shocks and so they fit properly and you get full cycling out of your suspension. All right, so one of the first things we need to consider is what diameter shock you're gonna run because there are some length and packaging differences. Uh, obviously the 2.0s are smaller in diameter. Uh, typical outside spring on these is about three and a half inches, and uh, they're also about an inch to an inch and a half shorter than a 2.5. Uh, your 2.5 typical spring OD is like four and a half inches, and the, the shafts and the bodies are a little bit longer, so we gotta take that into consideration. And then finally, we have to choose between brands. Uh, not, as, not as big of a difference between brands is lengths but the Fox and King can be about a quarter inch difference. And if we're really splitting hairs, that can start to matter. The 2.0s are great for uh, street use and for typical off-roading. Uh, the 2.5s are better for heavier vehicles and more serious off-roading, uh, more heat, higher load, that type of thing. All right, so now we're gonna jump over to the Jeep and we're gonna show you how to start cycling the suspension and measuring for what shocks are gonna fit. All right, so the first step in, in setting up your suspension and measuring for shocks is to get your chassis set up at ride height on some jack stands. And so we've got it pretty level, and a lot of cases ride height is gonna be dictated by how much belly height you want. Um, and then we're gonna follow it up, we might have to change it, we're gonna follow it up by checking our up travel and down travel and clearances and things like that. But for right now, let's get, we're gonna start with it, uh, the chassis at ride height. So now we've got the axle jacked all the way up and we're basically gonna go as high as we can go until we start having clearance issues underneath here. And uh, so we'll wanna check, you know, axle to engine, axle to frame, steering, links, basically anything under here that could bind drive shaft or hit something. We wanna make sure we've got adequate clearance. Um, how much clearance you have is really up to you and how sensitive the item you might hit is. So maybe an engine oil pan, we leave a little bit more clearance than like axle to frame. Um, but you've got to get it up as high as you can. And if you're not getting a lot of up travel, like less than four inches, you might want to start cutting things or reevaluate your ride height. Um, in general, uh, for like straight, strictly rock crawling, uh, four inches of actual up travel is sort of the minimal we recommend. Um, five inches is kind of what we recommend for trail riding and six on up is good for people that want to go faster. Um, Ultra four guys are pushing seven to nine inches of up travel in the front and 11 plus in the rear. Um, but for you to kind of figure out where you are in that range, we'll put some more information on our website to help you out. But get the axle all the way up and to select your shock length here, you're gonna to want to take a tape measure and kind of measure how high up you want to go. Um, in this case, this truck is built with the axle <coughs> basically right underneath the hood. And so, you know, we'll measure from up top, you know, down to about where we think we can mount it on the, on the lower here. Um, this one's mounted kind of offset uh, on top of the tube. Uh, some of them are mounted down off the back of the tube. Some are mounted on top of the link. You get a lot of choices, but kind of get an idea where you want to mount it. Um, before we talk about having you select what shock you thought you were gonna run, take a look at the extended and compressed lengths of those shocks and figure out what you think is gonna fit. Um, one thing to remember is on all these shocks, we're gonna take the compressed length and we're gonna add one inch. And the reason for that is that they all have this, a bumper on the shaft and this bumper is about five eighths of an inch thick. And then when your air bumps here are fully bottomed out, we want to have the bump, the bump stop here, plus about three eighths of an inch of chrome showing uh, on vertical bump with the axle all the way up on both sides. And that just makes sure that we never bottom out the, the quiller all the way on a hard hit because uh, there is some give in all of this stuff. Um, so take our measurements here and we might iterate once or twice. So, hey, I'm only getting, you know, three inches above travel. I want to have five. So we're going to either raise ride height, we're going to cut some more. Um, whatever might be, but the straight vertical bump is really going to dictate uh, a lot of how, how well this suspension performs, so it's worth taking some time on this, this step. 
All right, so next up here is full droop. So this one happens to have coilovers on it already, which is make it easy for us to show you this whole setup. But all this mocking up we've done so far can be done without the links in place, or without the coilovers in. Um, you just gotta do a lot more measuring in each position to make sure that you're sort of where the axle is gonna end up and take note of anything that's gonna, um, gonna hit if the axle shifts forward or backwards. But um, in this case, uh, full droop has been set by binding of hind joints on the steering. Um, this particular one, the drive shaft's okay in the front here, but that's a, a common issue is the drive shaft yoke binding. So make sure you kind of spin everything and make sure that it's not binding. Give it a visual look and make sure it's got some clearance. Um, and then also on droop, we need to be worried about having an adequate amount of droop. Um, on a solid axle build like this, you're gonna wanna make sure you've got four inches of droop minimum. Just for a decent ride on the street, you've gotta have some room for that suspension and move and follow the terrain. If you're pushing four inches, I might really try to fight to get an extra inch out of it um, to get five inches of actual droop um, at the tire. And then um, we can also have too much droop. Uh, Nine inches tends to be about the limit of how much droop we want. Uh, we have to keep the springs tight on the coilovers so they're not flopping around. And the more droop you have, the softer the spring rates need to be. And we found that nine inches tends to be about the cutoff. Sometimes we'll push 10 inches, uh, but the spring rates do get soft. What, what that causes is a lot of torque roll. So you'll get on the gas and the whole vehicle kind of lift up. And some of that's in the suspension, but some of it's also can be caused by having too soft of a spring rate because that's helping resist that motion. And then um, also having too much, too much droop and too soft of springs uh, contributes to body roll and other stability issues like that. So if you've got too long of a shock, you're probably also sacrificing some up travel. So if, you, if you're trying to shove a 16 into here and you're getting like four inches of up travel and 12 inches of droop, you really should consider going down to a 14 and get some more up travel and cut down on that droop. Um, we also can see we move to articulation that having too much droop really causes that tire to articulate over further and really puts it up into stuff. But um, the other thing we should think about here, droop is limit straps. Uh, my preference is to set the shocks up so that um, there's a hard stop inside of the shocks here and that if you, the limit shocks were to fail or stretch over time, you're not going to have a catastrophic failure that the shocks internals will stop it. Um, but then with heavy wheel and tire and axle setups like this, we want to make sure we have limit straps and you want them to limit the, the down travel of the shock. Um, it depends a little bit on the length of the strap. You want to run the shortest strap you can. And we generally say that they stretch about an inch for every 12 inches of strap. That obviously depends a little bit on the quality of the strap. Um, this one here on this is it's doubled up and they're quad wraps, so this is probably not stretching very much at all. Uh, but it's a good idea to have limit straps on heavy setups and it's a really good idea to make sure that your shocks have internal stops so that if the limit straps do stretch, you don't have a catastrophic failure. And, um, if you get in a situation we can, where you want the shocks to be a little bit shorter, uh, we can put more internal spacers in for you. So I think that's about it for Full Drew. All right, so here we've got uh, full articulation and full lock one way. And one of the first things you're gonna notice here is that uh, the coilover is bottomed out, but the air bump is not. Uh, that's, uh, the, further, the further out you move your air bump, the less uh, additional coilover travel you're gonna use. Um, so if you can get it outside of the coilover, that's great, but a lot of people aren't able to do that um, just due to clearance issues. Um, so it's okay under articulation that it bottoms out on the coilover. And because in this setup, the coilover is so far out, it really helps the tire from staying out of the fender um, by limiting crazy articulation. So here you can see that um, it's a really tight fit on the coil spring and the tire, and so we're, we're pushing limits here. And so this is something that you really kind of need to work on once you've got all your parts together, is figuring out how far can you need to lean that coilover uh, in order to, to get clearance on your tire. Uh, but you've really got to check this full lock both ways and you've got to articulate it both directions uh, because with a, with a pan hard setup, the axle will swing differently left to right 
and that may hurt you or help you. Um, on the other side of the vehicle, we would also be checking the coilover and the spring to make sure that it's clearing the frame okay, because sometimes when it droops, it swings underneath. And that's another place where the 16s or well, too long of a shock and too much droop can really hurt you is because as that other side just keeps articulating down and down and down, it just cranks this tire over further and it just really starts to get into everything. So um, it's important when you're doing your final setup to really check articulation. Uh, the people that spend more time articulating and turning and testing fitment uh, are the ones that end up with a better result. Their tires don't rub anything, they can get full flex. Um, it really pays off in the long run to spend some time here. Um, but this is another place to check again your, your coilover lengths and make sure you didn't get uh, too crazy with, uh, with the droop. All right, thank you for checking out our video and article on how to select and set up the right size coilovers for your build. Um, remember, it's important to start with an idea of what you want to build and where you want things to be for belly height and ride height and up travel. And then take your time cycling and articulating the suspension to really make sure everything's going to fit correctly and you're not going to have any binding issues. Uh, check out our website, AccuTuneOffRoad.com, for more tech articles and more information. Um, all of our coilover and bypass and smoothie products list the extended compressed lengths, uh, so you can take those measurements you've got and compare them to what's going to fit. Uh, and when you're ready to buy coilovers, or if you have any technical questions, feel free to give us a call so we can help you out. Thank you.